Hi, I'm Jordan Thorne. I'm the Editorial Content Manager here at FEI TV. We're here at Boston Innovation Festival and I'm joined here today by Amber Hall. She is the Strategic Foresight Manager for Wolverine Worldwide. Thank you so much for joining yeah, thank us. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to start off by asking you, if we were to look 10 years down the line, what trend or innovation do you forecast will be the biggest impact on consumers' daily lives in the future? Um, I think there are a few, several, but I think the one that makes will have the most impact is definitely around sustainability. Um, we are seeing an immense amount of change between people just saying I need to recycle yeah. and do better in my daily life to you know having this far more holistic perspective about what sustainability means yeah. and thinking about it on not just on a global platform but an individual platform of how do I show up to be my best self every day yeah. um, and then thinking about their community and, and what that what role they play in that as well as you know, on a global scale saying it's more than just recycling. I want, you know, good health and education for everyone. Yeah. I want equality everywhere. I want everyone to be paid well. Um, so you're seeing sustainability take on this form of it's not just about recycling. It's about this making the world a better place on a more holistic level. I think, you know, the conversation around climate change will continue to, you know, uh, increase over time. I think, you know, seeing things like we're flying higher and higher in the sky and we wear our seatbelts more when we take off um, and we're flying through turbul turbulence, I think that those things will all become factors and people will continue to be more conscious about the choices that they make. Certainly, um, you know, clean drinking water and some of those things and energy will always be a part of the conversation. Yeah. But I'm seeing more of a conversation increase around um, making sure that the products that people use that they're intentional yeah. and they're thoughtful. And it's not just about um, buying something to buy it, it's buying something that really adds value to my life. And so I think the value proposition will continue to change and a part of that will be sustainability. Really interesting. And you know, you're a woman uh, in a leadership role. And I'm curious, what, what degree do you feel of responsibility that women should have in leadership roles towards mentoring and sponsoring yeah. um, developing younger women into similar roles? Yeah, I think, I think it's a huge uh, responsibility for women. Um, I, there's no shortage of data that suggests the more diversity you have in leadership or in an organization, yeah. the better innovation outcome, right, and the more, the more growth. So that's, that's been proven, but I think from a women's perspective, the more of us that, that rise to the occasion and take on leadership roles, I think we do have a responsibility to mentor, to sponsor, and to advocate. And what I've learned through my own career is um, it's not just about mentoring. I think we have used that as a word to kind of blanket everything, but that's yeah. really not the only experience that junior people need in an organization. Yeah. They need women to advocate for them in a meeting. Yes. You know, and that is, you know, saying the things that no one else wants to say and speaking up for that person when no one else wants to speak up, as well as, you know, mentoring them behind closed doors and give me, giving them the guidance. But where I find the biggest um, need continually is sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Far and wide, men get sponsored, whether it be for education, promotion, or just visibility, um, far greater than women in an organization. So I think as women, uh, we cer I certainly feel it's our responsibility to, to find other women in an organization, to sponsor them, and to really lift them up. Um, I, I have benefited from those uh, relationships in the past. I've had everything from a mentor to an advocate to a sponsor. And um, ha having those experiences personally has made me realize, one, that representation is extremely important when it comes to women, not just women, but women of all color and backgrounds. Um, but then, you know, advocacy through an organization can take you f much further sometimes than, you know, what guidance you get behind closed doors. Yeah. Because it's, it's oftentimes what happens in those rooms that you're not in with leaders that decisions get made. And so as a junior person, you just don't have the line of sight to that. Yeah. So having someone in the room of, of, a, of a certain experience just enables you to, to see that and to get that uh, level of um, sponsorship faster. Couldn't agree more. Um, <clears throat> and so perfectly sort of leading into my next question, you mentioned a bit on how you do have, how you have had in the past yeah. mentors in all kind of different capacities. Um, do you have maybe one kind of brief anecdote about 
an impactful learning experience that really helped or changed your career? Yeah, so um, I had a, she was actually a director in my, in my function, but I didn't directly report to her at the time. And so um, she was kind of all three together, really, okay. which was really interesting. So she helped kind of help me navigate my career early on to say, what are some of the areas where, where I can grow, be it yeah. in my current role or expanding and stretching? Mm -hmm. um, and then she also, you know, was de she, because she had a seat at the table, she could share with me the conversations that were being had okay. um, and how I fit into that and what I could do differently or better or more of um, to help transform my own growth professionally. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately what I've gained from that is really, it really comes down to that representation. I think one, she's a black female, and I think having, being able to see someone in leadership that looks like me, yeah. I think you build that commonality and it allows you to have a conversation that maybe sometimes you can't have with others. Yeah. But then also just having a woman in leadership, she just had a certain level of strength at, at the table when it came to power of voice that otherwise probably wouldn't have been there. And I think I benefited from her being present mm -hmm. um, professionally because I certainly was able to grow. Yeah. But then also on a personal level, it created this sentiment in me that I need to continue to give of myself to others. So I think it's this, I think it's this, um, you know, the more you build those connections in an organization, it pulls you up, but you, you need to also then pull others up with you. Yeah, I love that. I think it shouldn't just stop at, you know, you've been mentored and yeah. someone's helped you up. Like it should be a constant cycle. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Um, what are some of the strategies that you think could help women achieve a more prominent role in their organizations? Well, that's a good question. I think um, part of it is, on, if you think about growing your career, it's a strategy at the end of the day, right? Yep. And so, actually having a strategy, actually okay. having a plan, I think is, is key. Um, and I think there's a couple elements that, that make that strategy successful. One knowing what you bring, mm -hmm. knowing what you, through your education or through your experience, where you truly create value that someone else can't provide. Yeah. Um, and then saying, what are, my, what are my areas of growth that I need to really harness? And I find that the more junior you are in career, the, the, the more okay it is to make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And to try and try and try again. Yep. So I have found with my own career and for others, try more roles sooner rather than later. Mm. Because if you, when you're eager and you're young, th yeah. oftentimes that means there might not be a family involved, there may just be more flexibility to travel or whatever, yeah. go get those experiences. Because I find in organizations, that's often what they assess you from, is yeah. not just the education that you bring, but the experiences that you have yeah. that, put, that set you apart from others. Yeah. And so for me, I, I, I recommend, you know, know what you bring yep. and, ex and exploit it because that's what you're good at. Yeah. But on the other side, where you need to grow, you need to find people within an organization that are either willing to let you work on a project or willing to t let you take on a role where you can grow and expand your capability so that when they're comparing you to someone else, yeah. they see you as a cross-functional, multidisciplinary you know, thought leader within an organization versus you've just kind of built your expertise in this role. I think that there's there's something to be said for you know experts who want to grow, you know, uh, just up the chain in that one field, and yeah. that's totally fine, but I think more and more, because our consumer's dynamic, mm -hmm. and so is the product you know, now becoming more dyna dynamic, I think the leaders have to too. Yeah. And so I think the more you can spend time um, having exposure to other parts of the business, one, it helps you build empathy, mm -hmm. because then you could be a better business person or business partner at the table, but then also I think strategically, when you're making tough decisions, you've thought about some of the other aspects of the company uh, that, I, that I believe make you a, a better leader. So those are kind of some of the things that I think would be really important. I think those are great strategies and sort of pushing people to maybe not, as you said, it's fine if people want to sort of stay in that lane. Yeah. But I think for many people who, especially are younger, maybe they don't quite know, they know they want to get to that position, but totally. how exactly? So it's yeah. kind of helpful to know that you think hopping around isn't necessarily a bad thing. No, and I think, you know, you need to build an understanding. So, yeah. I, you know, part of it's a gut check. I think staying in a role a few years, asking yourself if you felt like you've learned enough, yeah. you should be able to measure your success in that role, either to predecessors or, you know, have a conversation with your boss or, or influential, you know, um, leaders that touch that role to yeah. say, do you think that I've demonstrated mm -hmm. enough in this role to grow? Yeah. I think you should always be able to measure. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing on top of that is, 
if you want to grow into, if you have an aspiration to grow into a leadership role, go study the leaders that are already in those roles. Go yes. understand what their background is. Go understand the roles that they've taken within an organization. What you will find, many of them have had different roles across the business. Yes. Um, and they've done it at some point in their career. So um, I think it's, a, it's always a dance. My, um, I, have, I have someone very important to me in my life that's told me it's not a corporate ladder, it's a corporate, it's a corporate jungle gym. And you know you're gonna hop around, and you're gonna you're gonna be on the swings one day, and you're gonna you know um, be on a, a, another part of the jungle gym another day. But it's yeah. th this idea of building the skills you need, laying out a roadmap, but also being flexible because knowing that there are gonna be opportunities that come along that you didn't see coming, but yeah. are gonna be good for you. Yep. And I think having that line of sight, but with some flexibility, I think is really a key to growing in leadership. It's really helpful. I think yeah. a lot of people will benefit from that advice. Yeah. So can you just tell me what do you like about attending uh, the Boston Innovation Festival? So I love just the fresh perspective, right? I think we all get really bogged down with our day to day. So just getting out into the world and talking to other people who may have similar roles and yeah. just seeing how they apply what they do differently, I think is really cool. Um, the other thing is I think we have this idea that we always know the answer. We always have the right answer. Um, but I think being, coming to things like this and having exposure just makes you realize like, we're all, sent, we're all still trying to figure it out and we're all kind of in this place of learning and growing. And so I think it just helps build that, build that connection across industries and across um, different applications because there's really a common thread for, for what everyone does every day. Um, and so I, I really enjoy that part. And the other part is also getting our name out there. Selfishly, we come to these things to you know, talk about our work and to share what we believe is a, is a certain level of expertise. And so I think it's kind of a, a couple of things that really help you know, continue to, to bring us back to these type of events. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. It's been a pleasure speaking yeah, to you today. Thank you. thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.